What is up, Combo Cabal? I'm your host, Brent Cook, and tonight I have a very special guest with me, Alex McKinley. Welcome, Alex. Hello, everybody. Good evening. So, Alex, we have a pretty spicy treat for the Stormtroopers tonight. We are playing a list with Mishra's Bobble. Alex, do you remember the last time we tested this card? Wasn't it during the Luris era? And that's, like, basically eons ago. A year ago at this point, yeah. What feels like eons ago. Uh, the idea with Luris was that you could bring back Opal for free card advantage, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I think we might have dismissed it a little too early. We were so concerned about being a fast combo deck at the time that we sort of overlooked how it works with Mox Opal. Mox Opal needs that Metalcraft. Mishra's Bobble is sort of like a hybrid, at least in my opinion, Alex, between Preordain and Gitaxian Probe. And by that, I mean that with Mishra's Bobble, you can look at the top card of your opponent's deck, get an idea of what they might be playing, and obviously you get the draw on the next uh, upkeep. And it's also yep. like Preordain, because Alex, you can target yourself when you have a fetch land in play and gain a little bit of card quality that way, which is kind of nice. Yeah, and all that extra information is stuff that you can use to help sculpt your game plan, inform your cantrips, inform your discard spells, which, if you watch the last video, you'll notice that there are still thought seizes in the main deck. Um, this is a major concession to how the meta has changed in the post-Oko world. Uh, since the banning of Oko and Dread Arcanist and Astrolabe, the meta has shifted away from where beating blue decks isn't always the most important thing. Being able to disrupt other combo decks or get under the hate cards of the uh, non-blue prison-esque decks, which are not control decks. Uh, go listen to the Eternal, Eternal Glory podcast for more information about that. Uh, it just becomes more important. So the suite of only Defense Grid and Veil of Summer as our protection suite doesn't really do it for us anymore. Yeah, it's really good against those mid-range decks like Death and Taxes. Um, th that's the deck I have in particular when I think of Thought Seas being in the main deck. That said, Alex, mm -hmm. we did bring back a defense grid for this video. Alex, this was your suggestion. Why are we doing that? So it's really easy to play a turn one defense grid in this deck be between Chrome Mox, between Mox Opal. And those blue decks, they're not completely gone and... Sometimes just the thought seizes don't quite grind through the 6 million force of wills that these decks tend to play as well as a defense grid or the defense grid is needed to be, help beat an opposing Veil of Summer or a Stifle or other cards that um, are just harder to deal with. I will say this. I do like that thought seize can punch a hole to allow defense grid to resolve. That's something that I'm looking to do tonight. Uh, one thing mm -hmm. that I'm really excited about was when I've been testing this bobble list over the last few days, Alex... The Ad Nauseums in this deck are bananas. They are absolutely insane. I've been averaging about 25 uh, cards per Ad Nauseum, and I just love it. Uh, a big part of that, Alex, is no Echo of Aeons. Uh, part of that was losing. Echo was gaining Thoughtseize. Those two cards don't tend to play very well together, because if you discard a card from your opponent's hand and then give them seven new ones, it's a little bit awkward, uh, at least in my opinion. We still have it in the sideboard, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Echo's definitely part of that go fast plan versus non blue decks where all you need is that five mana uh, between two initial mana and a Lion's Eye Diamond to go off on turn one. Uh, and cutting Rite of Flame from the list, which is something we've experimented with before, and just decreasing the average converted mana cost. I think that this might be one of the lowest average converted mana costs, we, or average mana values, new wording, uh, that we've seen maybe ever. Yeah, definitely. So. Alex, you mentioned these no right of flame videos that we've posted before. I am on the record in one of the last ones saying, like, why do I keep on testing no right of flame? It's miserable every time I try it. This list is different. And I know that I sound like a hypocrite saying that. Trust me, I get it. But Mishra's Bobble, it really enables Mox Opal in a way that it's never been before. Because you can draw, one, more cards because your converted mana value is lower. But... Two baubles and an opal now make mana, where before you had to hit Chromox or Lotus Petal to really get going with an opal. And that's just not the case anymore, which is kind of nice. Um, you're just more likely to have these opals as actual initial mana sources than you ever were before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things that we thought about was trying like a 4-2 split with four mox opals, but drawing multiple mox opals that are off is just so awkward that it's just not worth uh skewing the deck in that direction and right of flame is still a good magic card but 
this is one of the cleanest lists that I've uh, felt playing without it. Uh, I think I'm only about 20, 30 matches into this sort of right list list, and it's shockingly good. And we didn't even really need to change the mana base uh, to, for the mana base to continue to be good and support what we want to do here. That's one of the biggest questions people have about this list so far, Alex, uh, in the small group that we've shared it in, is like, do you really need three red sources? The answer is yes. So obviously there's Pulverize where you want the three mountains. But even without Rite of Flame, this is the correct mana base because it gives you the proper pairings. It gives you Underground Sea and Taiga that cast Abrupt Decay with their Bloom Command, Trop and Badlands. Taiga and Bayou are not interchangeable because Volcanic Bayou is not a very good combo. Obviously it doesn't cast Abrupt Decay. But it also doesn't pair well on the combo turn. Volcanic Island on the combo turn might as well be a colorless mana sources in situations where you need to win with Wishclaw Talisman and Veil, which is a big, big deal. I just want to emphasize that a little bit because I, I feel like it gets overlooked. Yeah, most combo turns with this deck involve black mana and green mana. Bayou produces black mana or green mana, so it's not very good at helping you produce both, especially when on setup turns you want to be casting Brainstorms and Ponders, maybe a Thoughtseize, uh, and then occasionally you'll need Red to cast a Burning Wish. Uh, but it's much easier to establish your Underground Sea and your Taiga to have your diverse colors across your lands. Even though Bayou might look like it makes more sense, it actually doesn't. And that's one of those like unintuitive mana base building things. Yeah, definitely. So Alex, before we hop into the sideboard, I would like to emphasize a point here. This is the most artifacts I've ever played in an Epic Storm list. Alex, do you know what that magic number is? Oh boy, it's it's a lot. We're over half the deck is artifacts, right? No, not 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 that high. I'm sorry. We are Michael Jordan's oh. number, Alex. 23. 23 artifacts in this deck, the most I've ever played in the Epic Storm. That is more than Vintage PO by quite a bit. Uh and it's just exciting. So that's why people keep on mentioning four copies of Mox Opal. The downside is if you go down to two Chrome Mox, this isn't as reliable on turn one is the big thing. Um, sometimes Chrome Mox is an enabler for Mox Opal. And opening up double Opal that aren't active is just, oh, it's not good. So this turn one uh, Chrome Mox allows for Wish Call Talisman or Grids always, where Opal is just a sometimes. And that's why we have the 3-3 split. Mm -hmm. Moving to the sideboard. Alex, we're bringing back Chain of Vapor for this video over the second copy of Witherbloom Command. Uh, in my opinion, why we're doing this is that we found ourselves boarding in all four answers against decks like Death and Taxes. And if we're doing that, why not diversify a little bit, correct? Mm -hmm. Do you have any additional yeah, thoughts on that? Yeah, Chain of Vapor is also nuts in this deck with so many zeros because we have these uh, Chain of Vapor lines that you can facilitate with Bobbles, with Opals, with Chrome Moxes uh, to help build your pseudo natural storm that way. Uh, personally, I haven't been impressed by with the Bloom Command. I think one is great. The second one, maybe not so much, but Chain of Vapor also has additional utility in the fact that it answers bigger permanents like Karn, uh, mm -hmm. like Merit Lodge. Uh, occasionally Leyline of the Void, though Leyline of the Void is, affects this deck list the least out of most TES lists that I've ever seen. It's just an all-around catch-all, and it's, you know, it, it just keeps coming back. Yeah. I do think that the first copy of Witherbloom does have a lot of value. Uh, and mm -hmm. when I was typing up this list earlier, Alex, we are almost down to a singleton sideboard, which is weird. Uh, we do have the three copies of Carpets and the two Decays. Everything other than that is a singleton. And I can't remember the last time that I played a list like this where we have 10 one-ofs in the sideboard. It's sort of wild. Yeah, I think it speaks to how much flexibility our deck has between eight tutor effects. Uh, because a lot of times you can tutor for the exact correct removal spell with a Wishclaw Talisman, uh, or you wish for a Storm Engine, or the Massacre, or the Pulverize. And it just get, does good things. We also see the return of sideboard Thoughtseize, which... If you notice, that's a, still the same number of Thoughtseize in the 75 as the previous video. Just we kicked one into the sideboard, and then you'll notice that one of the Carpet of Flowers left. It's mostly due to mapping reasons. We were doing weird things like boarding out Ponder versus Delver when we were playing four Carpets, and that felt wrong. Uh, uh, I feel like we should time out for a second. So the, the board plan was to 
uh, board out three copies of Chrome Mox. And then we had this extra carpet still on the board. And we said, what is the weakest card against Delver? Because you're upgrading your Chrome Moxes into this incredible mana source. And then you have to figure out what card matters the least in the main deck. And you need Bobbles to activate Opals, especially when you're boarding out Chrome Mox. I think that's a pretty uh, fair assessment. And then mm-hmm. from there, it's like down to like Thought Seize or Ponder. Uh, and I don't think you really want to be boarding out protection against the deck with Stifle, Force of Will, and Force of Negation. So we were boarding out this Ponder. And that tells me that we were overboarding just a little bit. And instead, we should possibly shave that card in the board to help out some other matchups. And that's where the Thought Seize came back. Yep. It also let us have the defense grid in the main deck because now we have five cards to bring in versus non-blue decks between uh, our four removal spells and the one Thought Seize. So it's a cohesive 75 with a bunch of very good born plans, which is kind of what you want out of your deck. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to board out defense grid against some of these mind break strategies. Like death and taxes, I could see myself leaving it. It really depends on uh, how we're feeling in the moment, in my opinion. Hmm. I think it's time to play some magic then. I think so. But before we do, friendly reminder, if you want to support this great, great storm content and you love hearing Alex McKinley's voice, you can always sign up for a donation deck to support this YouTube channel. You can see your combo deck right here by going to the epicsworm.com slash donation decks. Three wonderful tiers for you to choose from. Or you can go to the epicsworm.com slash shop. Pick up a pint glass, a token pack, or a Storm 20 baseball tee to kick off your summer. Always a great idea. Also, just one more friendly reminder. You can go open up that description down below and join the Storm communities. They're all terrific. I highly recommend the Discord. Alex McKinley is even a moderator there. He'll go out of his way to help you learn the Epic Storm for free. Uh, I am now just giving away Alex's services. I hope you enjoy that, Alex. (laughs) Thank you for joining me in this video. And round number one will be coming up in just a second. Don't go anywhere. Alex, welcome to round number one, as well as all of you stormtroopers out there. We're facing Herman OMLG. I don't know what that stands for. Oh my large God. I don't know. But we're on the draw against Herman. And we've opened up a hand that I think is pretty reasonable. Alex, what do you think? Yeah, I like this hand. It's very hard to turn back um, ad nauseum. It is a little bit unfortunate we have LED. So maybe at some point a plan is to put this ad nauseum back on top. Let's see how this game develops and what our opponent is doing. Tapped Mystic Sanctuary. Well, that says something about this game. And this Mox Opal is very good. So... How do you feel about turn one claw, Brian? That's I was about to just say that. I was like, my plan was to ponder... And I made that decision before I did anything, but I think with the opal draw, we jammed the claw. Mm-hmm. And if they force this, I'm fine with that. Deal. Yeah, I think them forcing this is a big win for us, uh, the way our hand is constructed. Um, okay, another Mr. Land Force doesn't really tell us that much. Well, they pitched a Snapcaster, so we don't yeah. know that much. Ooh, I like Burning Wish. Um, yeah, we can use it to go get Thoughtseize. Mm-hmm. Probably next turn, because I don't think I actually want to fetch. Yeah, you want the Lotus Petal or something? Well, it does get us up to the Magical 6 number, because I'm thinking if we go get Thoughtseize... We can thought season to add nauseam in one swift motion. Mm hmm. Yeah, they also might have some sort of soft counter magic for the burning wish, like spell pierce or spell snare. Uh, I've seen people playing actual factual counter spell recently. Yeah. So you never know what people are doing. Uh, sideboard thought is already paying its dividends here. Definitely, for sure. If everyone, like, Force of Negations this, that's A-okay with me, because that's mana that we don't have to spend, and then we get to fetch away the line that's on top of our deck to try and draw into, like, a Veil of Summer or one of the other Thought Seizes, something like that. <laughs> fetch into Force. Okay, so they're down to two cards. I'm definitely fetching away the land now. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right. So now they're down to three. Um, another brainstorm. Brainstorm okay. from the opponent. Oh, well, I'm really interested Wonder. to see what our next draw is because I think it's going to dictate our game plan moving forward. Okay. Because like I don't know if we just jam. Um... Oh. <sighs> That's brutal. All right, we're um, drawing the land now because now we can resolve ad nauseum. They have one card in hand. Yeah. And I look like a genius for not playing out the pedal. Big brain. Okay, Brian. Big brain. It's okay. It's okay. We we just decided not to play magic. I don't know if that makes us a genius quite yet. Genius. <laughs> Boom. Ad Nas resolves. That felt very fast. I'm watching through his screen share, so I can't quite tell if it feels like they're F6 or not. Oh, they're definitely But I think F6. Brian will have to be a judge of that. Ooh, and we drew the Thoughtseize, too, so we can, like, Veil check them. Um, so... so this is what uh, Ad Nas looks like with a bunch of bobbles in your deck. Yeah, it's 17 pretty... cards. I started to use the hotkeys recently, Alex, so I'm using the hotkeys for yes and no now. Uh, I have gotten bit once, uh, so it's not perfect. I'm still getting used to yeah. it. In the middle of a um, challenge, I accidentally f 2 through my turn, and that was not yeah, great. Yeah, so that actually was interesting because we actually almost didn't have enough black mana if we cast the Thoughtseize. But um, our opponent conceded, so they didn't have the Veil anyway, I guess. So Cybering is these slow blue decks. We're going to leave in one Chrome Mox because it's the best singular Mox to draw. Bring in our Carpets uh, and are about case because they probably have something hateful. Uh, you just never know what it is. Um, but this looks like the true band control with Uros and other nonsense like that. Yeah, and I was a really big fan of the way that you said cop it right there. Uh, very Boston of you. I yeah, these nice cop it. Exactly. Um, I'm originally from just outside of Boston, in case all you guys didn't know. Um, nice town. Yeah. And now I ended up on the West Coast. Such is life. So another uh, thing near Boston would be a different podcast, but instead, our podcast, the Eternal Glory Podcast, make sure you go check that out. But I was going to shill, and then we got paired. So we're just going to play game number two instead. And Alex, what does Volcanic Island not do? Doesn't cast a broke today, but this hand is still insanely good. I agree. Yeah. Definitely uh, mana base is something that's not... You're, we're playing four colors. Your mana base can't be perfect with four colors anymore in Legacy. Uh, they, they banned the card that did that. We tried or the good card that it. did that, anyway. Yep, I, I did try playing in a league. It we, wasn't... We both tried it. Don't try to take all the credit here, McKinley. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Snowstorm would have been such a good video, but just wasn't quite good enough. Yeah. Alex was a little bolder than I was. Alex uh, wanted to play. By the way, I think I should consider on some brainstorming here. Because if I jam Claw onto, uh, that means that we don't have a shuffle effect. So I like playing the brainstorm now. Mm -hmm. Get rid of this Volk. Okay. Uh, yeah. And the other card honestly just doesn't matter. Uh, we'll uh, put back one of the lands in case they randomly surgical us, I guess. I, honestly, or I guess the Ponder is the least valuable card. Yeah, I actually think the land is probably a little bit better. Uh, and I'm gonna grab so we Swamp, fetch here. Swamp here, right? Yeah, play around yeah. back to basics. Yep. Pun really liked forcing all of our claws last game, so. And they've learned their lesson. <laughs> okay, I got really nervous so, there. I was like, "Oh, please don't be built after I just trash talked." <laughs> So I wonder if this suggests that they have only one force or no counter magic. Or uh, removal spell. We'll see what they do here. Yeah. Bone with all the call hand basics. Ooh. So it's worth well, noting we cannot fetch for a green source with this. Tyga. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I think there's a very real world in which we're supposed to ponder here to try to find a green source. What do you think about that? I'm fine with it. And if we find opal, we can decay. Yeah. And it's better to decay main phase to play around Vale. Mm-hmm. 
think I'm gonna shuffle. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. I think they have a force. I don't really want to jam. Yeah, I, I don't think I jam either. It's just back to basics is annoying. It's not game ending though. Yeah. Well, we just have to find an untapped land at some point, and we're back in this. Mm hmm. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. So they're likely playing uh, the combo with Hull Breacher. Maybe. We'll see. That list does play a few Veil of Summer in the board, so we might not be able to get through this Hull Breacher. Mm hmm. Or, or through the back to basics, I mean. Yeah, though if we draw a green source, I'm less interested in decaying this back to basics and just casting um, a Veil of Summer to attempt sure. to win the game. Yeah, I agree. Come on, deck. Ugh. Is it crazy that I'm thinking about just moving to discard rather than playing out a diamond? Yeah, these brainstorms are super dead. Although that would have been a pretty good window for us to try to win. Yep. This is a main phase Mystic Sanctuary? Correct. Okay. So, yeah, I think all we want to draw off the top is green mana or things that make green mana. I would be very into imprinting Abrupt Decay. At this point, too. Yeah. But we only have one Chromox in the deck, so it's kind of a tall ask. Uh, it turns sure. out we, I mentioned boarding out Opal, um, or trying to draw Opal. We boarded it out, so that was never alive. Mm hmm. wonder what this meddling mage is going to name. Oh, we don't need Dark, dark ritual, ritual, so that's fine. Okay. So they played a bear. In theory, we could also Burning Wish for Massacre. Yeah, we could do that. Just throwing that out there. We draw like volcanic or something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, they have four cards. I vote we jam. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're losing swiftly, and our life total is under a lot of pressure. So I think just putting ad nauseum on the stack is, uh, and kind of praying is our best way out of this game. I would agree. Yeah. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but uh, there's still a game three to be played. Mm -hmm. So do we want to change anything after seeing what our opponent had? I don't know. I don't think so, if I'm being honest. Um uh... We did play around back to basics the best we could. We could, in theory, board in a few more uh, initial mana sources, but I'm not even sure what I'd want to board out. Like, I think all these cards have significant value. Yeah. Probably just going to resubmit. Yeah. Okay. It says many cards that I like. So uh, this ponder really wants to find green source and Veil of Summer. Um, One at a time. Well, I'd take a green source this start. Let's not be too greedy. <laughs> well, I found Veil of Summer. I don't think we're supposed to keep this, unfortunately. No. I think Bobble is much worse when we don't have all of our... <laughs> all of our... Uh, um, Moxon in the deck. Ooh, they have their own carpet. They're playing around our carpet, too, so... I don't understand why people board in carpet against us. It doesn't really make sense to me. We have three islands. Like, technically, it's enough to trigger it, I guess. Yeah, and I guess even, like, triggering it once is fine. It just feels like you could have better cards. I think I'm just going to pass uh, here. Yeah. Notably, this volcanic doesn't cast this abrupt decay at all again. 
Mechanic Island, still the worst land in the deck. You could the issue here is that... In theory, you could play Lotus Petal under Carpet, but we don't have any value at the moment, so there's no reason to burn it. And mm -hmm. Okay, that was good. And we can play the Brainstorm before, before Hullbreacher hits play, which I like, so I'm good with that. Yep. All right, so this is a little bit awkward. Um, we're brainstorm locked. We can't really do much about it. Yeah, put back two of our cards, I guess. Um, we really don't want to play this carpet until our opponent fetches a green source, or fetches a blue source, excuse me, um, which I think that they are very de-incentivized to do. Um, but we'll see. we'll see how they play the game. Not feeling great about our spot here. Yeah. Not hitting a land there was definitely uh, backbreaking. Mm -hmm. And they're playing very hard into the never give them an island uh, game plan. Yep. Right, here they go. All right. Not back to basics. We'll take that. Do you think we're supposed to play carpet on our turn? I think so. I think as bad as it feels, just doing nothing is worse. Because like, they might choose to let it resolve. Um, even though I think they're going to counter it, it's probably going to be two for two. Well, oh, that's now, insane. Well, now they have that information, but it gives us a shuffle, so we're drawing live next turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's basically like, are we going to play out an LED, or are we going to uh, put this carpet into play and potentially get Force of Willed? Well, now they know that they should probably Force Carpet, right? Yeah. That said, if they force carpet and we draw a land next turn, and that's what they chose to do, we're really far ahead if we draw a green source next turn. Yep. Yeah, so it's trading two for two, but I, I feel ahead. I think our opponent surgical something irrelevant, or that felt irrelevant. Um, now that they, it feels like they're on empty. All right. Come on, deck. I mean, we're still in this. We just need to draw a land. Yep. Game feels very even at this point. Um, classic Flood versus Screw. Well, uh -huh. now we're de-incentivized from playing out the uh, other LED. Uh, I'm yeah. fine with jamming a Wishclaw here. Mm-hmm. Gonna force it. Feels like they are. Is this a hard cast force? Like hard cast spawn, yeah. Okay. Yep. What are Take the that. odds you think that last card is a Veil of Summer? Oh, it's got to be insane, right? Like they signaled it because they left up the forest. Hmm. What do you think about Wish for Echo here? That's what I was about to do. Um, I like jamming this echo. Uh, Do I? I'm not, I'm going to wait. I don't really want to jam the echo, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It feels like we're ahead here and we're refilling our opponent when they have so many cards. Like, we're so ahead if we draw green source ever. Yep. Um, but our opponent de declining to crack this EE feels very odd to me. Well, they can um, wait until we play this one. They don't need to play yeah, but the it. So we're at a point here where we can actually resolve pure if they don't have anything in hand, but we'd have to lead on the Dark Ritual Thoughtseize. Um, yeah, 
Yeah. So I did that intentionally. Okay. Uh, so believe it or not, it was intentional. My plan now is next turn I'm going to Burning Wish for the other Thoughtseize, assuming we don't draw a green source. Yeah. We can't really empty the Warrens either. Uh, because of this engineered explosives on zero. So I wonder if that's just what they're waiting for and they don't want a one for one with LED with it. Oh my. Oh, that's huge. We finally drew um, the green source. We just uh, slam this. I'm going to play it a right. little bit slow. Um. Um, so they're at 14. Can we natural storm them? I don't want to. I guess that's not very good. They could good. have a, a Snapcaster Veil. They could have a number of things. Let's just play a little bit conservatively. I wonder if they're holding Hull Breacher, though. That, that'd be something I'd be worried about. Well, hopefully we find out. Yeah. Um. I think we can just pass here. Yeah. We can do everything next turn. This Mystic Sanctuary? Nope. Oh, it's they need to fetch twice for Mystic Sanctuary, so they can put Veil back on top of their deck. They choose... Ponder Brainstorm? Ponder? Ponder? That's wild. I don't understand that. I think they might have another Veil in hand. Maybe. Um, we have Burning Wish for Grape Shot. Yep. That's annoying. All right, well, they took down the Veil Mana. Um, yep. Which is interesting. Okay. Would you rather thought seize now while they, they have that down? Um, or do you just want to bring your grape shot? Um, it's close. Or I can just get massacre. I don't need to get grape. Yeah, shot. that's that's better. Uh, what if it's back to basics too? I should fetch. Yeah, and probably top tap the uh, volcanic to cast uh, the wish. Is that better than the Badlands? This is our only blue source. That's fair. That's fair. That is notably three burning wishes out of the deck, right? Yeah, so the last one needs to be Grape Shot. Mm hmm. So they have one card. Uh, they don't have any green mana up. That is correct. But I'm just trying to think. They have one card. Um, All right, I think we just jam this Massacre. If it's a counter spell, though, we're set back to the Stone Age. True. But it, it's always going to be on top of their deck, right? Like, I guess they have hard cast everything up. Um, why, why would it be on top of their deck? They don't have any fetch lands. Yeah, I, what I meant is that they could always end up with another counter spell on top of their deck. I don't know. It's, been, it's super close. They've been sitting on one card for a couple turns now, right? Like, it's safe to assume that they drew carpet last turn. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> Got him. All right. I mean, I guess that, yeah. I guess that didn't truly matter. And I guess they avoided playing it out in case we wouldn't, like, Massacre Pass. Okay, that was actually very good. Yeah. Whew. 
Oh no, that was a punt. No. Uh, they have, I don't uh, think they have, so. They have EE. Uh, tap. I think this. I think that this still works. If we tap Swamp, Volk, play Talisman. So now they're gonna. So we don't let that resolve. We. Rit. Veil. Crack, crack. Um, so I'm thinking Adnaz right now, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I think I like Adnaz. All right. Deck, don't fail us now. Not a good start for that. Yeah. Ooh, loving the zeros, though. Yep. Okay, so Grid doesn't actually stop Veil of Summer here. No, but we're not dead yet, so I guess we can keep flipping. Right? Now we should stop. But that actually does it, because that's Grape Shot, right? It should be. Uh, it's from seven, eight, nine. Bobble is nine. Uh, ritual is ten. Woo! Woo! Hell yeah! That was a nail biter. What a nail biter. Don't go anywhere. More great magic coming right up. All right, Alex. We are facing JJ the Giant Slayer. Ant Legend. We're on the play. Um, this would have been better as a Thought Seize. That said, this hand, even with the Thought Seize, it's kind of stinky. We're going to ship it. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of Thought Seize. Slightly better, but not still... great. Yeah. I don't really want to mulligan a bunch in a discard mirror, um, and this Mox Opal is kind of dead anyway, but I guess we're putting back I, I, Correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I guess... If we I guess like, if our game plan is to draw LED, then Opal is good there anyway. This is fine. Yeah. Unfortunately, our draws weren't, uh, her opening hands weren't that good. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't really a hand that I want to keep in this matchup. No, but I think it's better than five when we don't have a main deck echo, which is unfortunate. Okay, so we have the mono blue card hand. I think you just let them... Like, there's no point in discarding a cantrip. Mm-hmm. Our best draw off the top is claw, I think, just deterministically. Yeah, claw would be insane. Mm hmm Okay. We'll take that one, too. I would now take a Claw. Yes, I would also take a Burning Wish. I suppose. Uh, wish it... Burning Wish is a little bit better than uh, Wish Claw Talisman here, I think. All right, Alex. I'll do take in fact either, have... okay? I'll also take an Ad Nauseam, <laughs> okay? I'm not going to be picky. I just want an action spell. <laughs> We do have nine mana here, uh, so lots of outs and things to do. Um, notably from our Thoughtseize decision, none of the cantrips were Brainstorm, which I think is really important to us uh, being more in this game than not. Like If they had had the ability to Brainstorm, they would be able to fix their hand a lot faster rather than casting these cantrips one by one by one. I'd like to note, they did not... So they kept their Ponder and didn't fetch. That's mm -hmm. an interesting signal. Yeah. Uh, Ant players have been known to play one to two uh, Fluster Storms or uh, Veil of Summers in their main deck. Uh, and it's just hard to tell what's what. I think we're supposed to put back a ritual. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we need to make sure we still have agency over our draws to try to find and dig towards um, winning the game. Okay, well... If we get another turn, it's decent, but a little bit nervous. So I guess we draw 
We draw Verdant. Player on discard, I guess. I mean, it isn't even... I guess that is... That is the downside of... Um... Oh, so they have end of turn brainstorm. Oh, just cycle veil? Okay. That's weird to me. I don't think I would have made that play, but... Order works for them. Um... So we know that they have at least one preordain in hand. If we need to, we could theoretically fetch, cast, brainstorm, pray to hit Veil. Um, but I'd yep. rather not be in that situation. Mm -hmm. um... One on top, one on the bottom with Preordain. Yeah. Looks like they're going for it. That's a little scary. That's a lot scary. So it looks like they're okay. trying to cast Adnaz. Yeah, Adnaz with none floating. And they've already used their land, so we don't have to do any sort of desperation brainstorm yet. Or they just have a golden oh. kill. Maybe. Uh, five tutor tutor tendrils is lethal. I'm gonna need one more. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they have the deterministic kill here. All right, it's all gonna come down to this brainstorm. Mm hmm. All right, we have four veils in the deck. Let's fucking go. All right, let's go. Uh, let's so go. Hear me out. And it's a slim thing, but what we could do is we could. I guess we could do it any. So there's no point in doing it. Uh, I actually just yeah. thought of the reason why. We could crack the LED for blue. There's no reason to do that because if we do draw into another brainstorm, we can sack the petal for blue and then this for green. Mm hmm. All right, game two. Let's go. Um, so I think I want our sideboard thoughtsies, right? Get rid of this card. Uh, and I th really? Yeah, it doesn't play yeah, well with our own Veil of Summers. Veil's the best card in the matchup for us. Uh, that said, mm -hmm. I do like swapping Grave Shot and Tendrils. Uh, a lot of TES players don't do this. I've started doing it more recently. Uh, only because Surgical has made a little bit of a comeback in some Antlers, and this plays around that, uh, while also beating Veil of Summer. So I like doing this. All right, let's go. Yeah, it shows you kind of how we played the game, uh, where if we had kept the Dark Ritual over the Brainstorm, then we get to go off on that turn. So. Yeah, I mean, maybe you were playing too conservatively, but also That's very possible. Yeah, go check out the Eternal Glory podcast. I promise you, you won't regret it. We had a great episode recently about control decks. You're sure to love it. All right, game two on the play. I'm not shipping this. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I think we fetch for Trop. Yep. So we only need two more mana for this hand to function. Um, and if we don't get discard spelled on turn one, uh, then I'm super into jamming on turn two if this ponder finds the right card. Um, Speaking of finding the right card, there we go. So 
So you also hide the, the dark ritual because if our opponent sees our hand and they think, oh, well, they don't have a turn two, I'm going to take the, own, the thought seize so I can win on my turn two, you gain a little bit of equity. I mean, they're likely mm. to take Wish Claw, but you can't bank on that. Yeah. I, I think that if they take... Uh, yeah. I'm inclined just to Thought Seize back and then cast um, Ponder. Yep. Uh, let's look at this a little bit more closely. So, so they if we draw if they draw Dark Ritual, we're dead. Um but I think we take that. Yeah. So we have eight mana, which means this ponder wants to find a mana. A mana. Yeah, um, that's just perfects. Yep. With the burning wishes on top of our deck. So notably, we did need another initial mana source because uh, the right now we can make black or red mana. Um. Which is just how we fetched, and I think that we fetched for what made sense in our opening hand. Um, but yeah. Pun has a tough decision here. So they couldn't cast any of the cards. That, I wonder if they're thinking about ritualing out a Wish Claw Talisman. Oh, they drew LED for turn. Okay. All right. Just because. Pier Town population us. <laughs> What's this abyss look like? I'd like to look into it. Hi. -o. And I am not going to show them the grape shot in the main deck if I can help it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like we should have plenty to uh, keep going. They're at 17. We know that they don't have Veil of Summer. And they've conceded. All right. All right. We got game number two. All right. Now, game three on the draw. Are there any changes that you would make? Nope. No changes on the draw. And a friendly reminder, whoops, about our donation decks. If you want to join me here on this YouTube channel, similar to what Alex McKinley is doing right now, you can sign up for our epic tier and tell us about your deck live in person. Give us the board plan. Give us the deets. Wow, what a hand. Ding, ding, ding. We got a winner. Uh, we can't ship this back. That said, we would like to get to our turn unscathed. Yes. Um, opponent casting cantrip on one would be wonderful. <sighs> Boo. Brutal. Um, it'd it's, be interesting to see what they take here. I think it's just ad nauseum, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I could see a world where they take the dark ritual because we have two payoffs. It really depends on the context of their own hand. So what I'd be looking to do on our turn is fetch for Underground Sea, cast Thought Seas, play Lotus Petal, and hold up Bale of Summer. Yep, I agree with all of that. They're having a think here. So something they could do is if they have a turn two, they could take Thought Seas. Um, that's another yeah, option. But then, yeah, but then they need to beat our Veil. So they could be considering taking Veil. I think that there's like... I think that, the, yeah... I think they could take almost any card in their hand except Lotus Petal, and I think that they'd be correct with uh, their decision. All right. I don't mind the Taiga draw for what it's worth. Yeah, no, Taiga's good. 
All right. Um, what do you think the right play is here? I'm honestly not sure. Um, I think I, I'm kind of into claw. taking... Is that... Yeah, okay. Claw. Because I think we get to ignore their Veil better, and we're going to Veil their Thoughtseize, and they know that they can't cast Thoughtseize. So uh, what are they going to do? Like, Infernal Tutor for another Thoughtseize? That seems underwhelming. Um, All right. Uh, what do you think of here, just like Burning Wish for Pier? I don't hate it. Let's do it. Um, yeah. You would have to draw a Dark Ritual to win, but... Technically a little bit more likely to, to draw LED, but I think this is fine. Well, I think now they're incentivized to play Thoughtseize. Um, so maybe this is a line we should have waited a turn to do. I mean, they knew we, they, we had the Burning Wish anyway, so I, I can imagine that they might uh, Infernal Tutor for Thoughtseize here. Well, they're certainly Infernal Tutoring for Dark Ritual. Ooh, Infernal Tutor for Dark Ritual. So is there a last card in Ad Nauseam? Come on, Doc. Dark Rit! Oh. Alright, I guess we pass. So we're a mana source away right now. A land on our turn will do it. Yep. Chromox will do it. Petal will do it. Okay. Okay. I think we veil in response to this. Because what if they just like play underground sea and then have fluster up? Yeah. But I mean, I think we lose the fluster regardless is the issue. Uh, because we can't peer. Mm -hmm. But at least we don't die this way. Like, down to five, down to one. That looks pretty good for us. I mean, we'd have to be able to untap. Um, also, if there's a, I don't even want to say it out loud. If there's a grape shot in their deck, uh, we're dead. Mm hmm. Two past in flames is a. A choice. Yes, a choice. Come on, pass the turn, JJ. What could go wrong? Uh, notably, we don't even need to cast this pier. I'm well aware. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had too many Storm 1 Grape Shot victories in my life. Probably less than a handful. I'd like one right now. And it beats the Veil of Summer in their hand? Whew. Yep. And then we have Dark Ritual to beat... We could just pay for Flusterstorm if they like brainstorm into it anyway. But we have Dark Ritual to pay for Flusterstorm. Um... See what happens if you cast out Nazio to make expensive cards in your deck? <laughs> Don't brag, we could be dead. Hey, I guess. Alright, so they let's cross out the cards they've already played. So here's a brainstorm from them. No, they're going for it. We're okay, dead. so they think they have something here. Um, like Brian said, they very well could have uh Grape Shot in their deck. All right. I guess, guess we're dead. They have it, yeah. Honestly, I don't know why they oh. were tanking because I think like they're doing overkill right now. So if there was a grape shot on their deck, they had it the whole time. They was like overthinking. Yeah. Like they didn't need uh, another dark rat. Oh. <laughs> Detection well, tower. That's another way of beating Vale of Summer. Yeah. I guess that's why they were tanking. They actually needed the extra mana. Yeah, they needed to figure out how much mana they needed. That's a fair assessment. Well, the tendrils. Is Wait, did they there. activate? Oh, they did activate it. Okay. Yeah. They just. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, detection tower is certainly a card that uh, beats Veil of Summer. So unfortunately, we're going to be 1-1. One, one. Not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. That was still a very fun match. Uh, round number three will be coming up. All right, Alex, round number three, we are facing Matthias Hardstyle. Alex, I've actually played this person fairly recently, and they were on Omnitel. Uh, they were on a weird three-color build for white with Teferi and green for Veil. I don't know if that's popular now, but uh, what do you think of this hand? I would keep this many days long. Uh, we got this LED, we got this Wish Clock Tiles, and we got Brainstorm. It's like bread and butter. We've also finally drawn Mishra's Bobble. Yep. Um, hey, ooh. a bobble looking so, better than a right of flame right here. Yep, this lets us do the turn one brainstorm shaped thing. Is that better than the turn we... one wishclaw shaped thing? Probably not. I, I think I'd Especially rather... when we have burning wish in hand. Claw. Yeah. All right. We got a game. Um, I think I might have bobbled them there. I thought they were going to fetch, so that's why I didn't. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm definitely going to bobble now, though. Yep. Um, we already got the two-mana artifact into play, so we don't need the zero-mana one anymore. I feel like that's going to be a common play pattern with this card. All right, let's try All to right. find Brainstorm's... Uh, something good. Yeah, Brainstorm's great, but uh, we don't need this many. Okay, so this was actually a pretty decent Brainstorm. We can definitely put one of these back. Um, and then maybe even the land. This person, I believe, has Veil of Summer, so I don't love Burning Wish as my uh, protection spell. That said, it could be our action spell, Alex. We could look to Peter yeah. and then have Veil for uh, off of Wishclaw Talisman. Yeah, I wonder if we just echo this turn, though, with... Uh... Veil back up from Wishclaw Talisman. Maybe that's too risky. I mean, we can. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Nine's the magic number. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, the issue is that we could just be dead next turn, and that's, like, not a very fun spot to be. It might be a little bit crazy, but I kind of want to cast this Brainstorm, see if we can get another Dark Red or Diamond, because I think that gives yeah. us enough repair. All right. Um, so let's do some counting. All yep, right. counting is uh, pretty good. Uh, so, so three. we'll have two mana floating. So this is still one short of peer. Oh, well, we can peer, but it's a short, a mana short of Wishclaw and the Veil. Correct? Yeah. We have ten? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Correct for blue and green. I guess we didn't... Yeah. I think you do both up front, because you don't want too much green mana. Yeah. I think I'd spend like this, and then if they like... Uh... Floster. That's uh, not a card you see too often main deck. Mm-hmm. That resolved very quickly. Okay. Okay. So... We do need the echo to be good now, or else we're probably dead. Yep. Though I don't know if opponents like play Soul End, so if they have to claw for part of their combo, I don't know if they can resolve all of it. This is annoying. Yeah. I'm trying to get better with the hot keys. Now they're going to cast Veil. That said, yeah. Rent's from 10 already. Um, ooh, so... Uh, I think we just play it. 
Yeah, we don't really have any other options at this point. Um, I guess we imprint the Thoughtseize because it's better out of the Brainstorm. Hey! Hey! Yes! Mess up for us not finding Vale in that Ant game. Yeah, the universe is fair. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we should maybe want the Thoughtseize out of the board, but if that, not really anything else. Probably get rid of the tendrils. Like I know it won there, but I think we got a little bit lucky. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Echo of Aeons doing some heavy work. Yeah. Alex's line, big brain. Echo's a good magic card, despite what some people will say. Yeah, I like it. Just not on my main decks. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Alex is not as on board with the uh, no main deck echo plan. I think that it's significantly better. Uh, my ad nauseums have just been beautiful. Um, yeah. But Brian, sometimes I like dying to my ad nauseum. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, so I've seen many screenshots of you uh, <laughs> sending me those. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll just have a nice screenshot of McKinley dying to his own ad nauseum. And I'm like, ah, what a good day. So yeah, it's, it's just service for Brian. Gets them up in the morning. This hand's great. Let's go. I mean, Nick Foster, I, like, I really can't remember the last time I saw that out of uh, Show and Tell Doc. Usually it's Spell Pierce, um, which I think is kind of interesting. That's not a bad draw. They did shuffle with their ponder, so they're drawing a random card. I like knowing what their random card is. Um, I think we should bobble on our turn and, and not theirs. Why? Uh, because I think we want cards in hand on their turn. Does that matter? Um, like, what if they randomly cast, like, show and tell? So we now know we know that they avail. Ah, that's fair. Um, so then we could draw into Wishclaw. Yeah. Thought seize. So now I know that I want to shuffle away this Thought seize. Yeah. What? Ugh. Uh, do I want to shuffle away Thoughtseize now? Probably not. Probably not, no. Um, because they don't have Veil. Wow, no rod. I guess we'll if we don't win this, we're boarding in Decay for Game 3. Yeah. Do we want to risk it and cast Brainstorm? Is it just better to nug him with the Thoughtseize? I guess we just should cast the Thoughtseize while the Veil is down. I don't want to risk it. Mm -hmm. Force of Vigor? What are they doing? I guess we take Brainstorm. Yeah. Null Rod's a beating. Okay. Let's get rid of these artifacts. We don't need those. We yeah. can win without them. It's possible. Yep. Right um, now, honestly, with how their hand is constructed, I'm wondering if we could try to empty win. Yeah, I was also thinking that if we could build up enough storm to empty. Our colors don't quite work uh, yet, so I'm kind of interested in end of turn brainstorm, but well, maybe that's a tad aggro. I think I want uh, this to be a taiga, and I think we just untap and brainstorm rather than shutting ourselves off red when we need Burning Wish. Also, if we get a red source here, we could theoretically pulverize. That's fair. Uh, we can also look into Wither Bloom, but that gets countered by Veil. Yeah. So they played the Misty. Hmm. All right. Brainstorm says. <laughs> All right, so we have a More bunch burning. of uh, burning wishes. Let's start jamming. Yeah. I'd honestly be happy if they forced. Yeah, um, we should get the empty now, right? I think so. So still in this awkward situation where our black source or where our red source is our. Uh, green source but i guess we have another brainstorm on top so we can start the turn on brainstorm next turn i would start on dark ritual off of 
uh, the swamp. Because if they force that, you can just ritual again into empty. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I probably shouldn't have put the bobble. Um, I should have put a burning wish there because the bobble on top is a free storm. True. Feels like their combo game plan is not going very well. Um, feels like they have a bunch of answer cards and not really a bunch of action. Okay, so that resolved. Um, land is great. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm just trying to think here. So we can get Badlands and cast Burning Wish. Why? Why not? It's just Free Storm. What if they have a uh, Fluster? But the Bud Stamer doesn't get another green source. Yeah, but we just tap it for red for empty. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if that's the case, are we getting rid of one wish, one veil? Yeah, I think that's what I'd do. Oh, I'm so dumb. In my mind, I was just so tunnel visioned on Taiga being the red for burning, for empty. <laughs> uh, please forgive me. It's late. It's 10 p.m. I don't uh, know what you're talking about, Brian. It's, the clock says 7 o'clock. You live on the wrong coast. Yeah, you're right, I do. Um, I think we cast the veil before the empty. It doesn't change the clock. Um, so we'll be getting 12 goblins. That's fair. All right. They're Goblins probably, achieved. They're probably going to cycle their own Veil of Summer here. Mm hmm Yep. So I'm kind of into Burning Wish Thoughtseize next turn. I'm very into Burning Wish Thoughtseize next turn, if we have next turn. That's what I'm uh, hoping for. Okay. I like okay. I like not show and tell. That's a good sign. Yep. Our thought sees is in our deck. I don't know who would put it there, but I think we're supposed oh, to. Oh yeah, that's that, true. By the way. Um. Yeah. In that case, definitely. So they do have a tundra, which is a plains. An option we have is burning with your massacre. And blow up all our own goblins. Yes. Do you have any opinions on that? <laughs> I think that that's probably a losing play. Hmm. Interesting. Not entirely sure why, but... Oh, wow, that's ugly. Let's uh, try to find something here. I think we can get rid of these. Cast the ponder. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, it's free to ponder again. Yeah. Shuffle that. All right, whatever. We can still Burning Wish for Massacre. I'm just throwing that out there. Yes, we could do that. No blocks. So I think that they think it doesn't matter. Um, there is like the cute line of uh, show and tell omniscience to fairy bounce my ice fang, trying to get a card deeper. Yeah. Gonna force all this. Honestly, if they just force this, I think that that's fine. I mean, the game ends on their turn. Like, 
Um, the, the thing it's like echo or grape shot. Please don't kill me. I would like to beat a null rod. Yep. The survey says. Okay. That's a Teferi. That's the wrong three mana spell. Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> Got oh. there. Woot, woot, two oh. one. Welcome to round number four. We are on the Plagans Fish Duggery. Alex, according to their goldfish history, they've been on a, a number of weird decks recently. Uh, so there's Green White Depths, Sultai Delver, Jund Phoenix featuring Wither Bloom combo. But in my mind, Fish Duggery plays a lot of the Green White Depths deck. That's sort of what I put their like home deck on. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think this hand's finding its most decks in the format. What do you think? Yeah, I'd keep this. I think starting on Swamp Thoughtseize is a very respectable opener, especially on the play. Um, there's a small consideration for Swamp Petal, but I think we just want to know what's going on, uh, given their range of decks. Um, our opponent also has taken a Mulligan, so that makes this Thoughtseize plan even better. Alex, Mishra's Bobble. More information before you cast Thoughtseize, so you can see uh, what their top card is and then make an even better informed decision. A little bit like modern yep. Jun Shadow. Yeah. Um, there, it's possible they're playing discard, but I think it's unlikely we draw any card that's better than Wishclaw Talisman for them to take. Uh, so I think that that's a pretty safe play if they had a, some sort of targeted discard spell. All right. And our opponent's still thinking about their six cards. Probably just figuring out what to put on the bottom. So with this hand, I just want to draw a lady. That's the number one card I want. So I don't think you need to play Swamp to start. It doesn't hurt, uh, obviously, but if they're going to force a bobble, you take that. Recruiter of the Guard. Uh... So Death and Taxes, or uh, I think Reclaimer plays that. Uh, it could be Aluren. Wow. Wow. Blue-White Vile. We are not winning this match unless <laughs> we draw runners off the top. Like, none of these creatures makes a difference. Uh, I think we take Thalia because it disrupts us the most. Um, technically, we can massacre these away. Um, it's true. We could uh, take Lavinia and then look to ha have Massacre as an out. Well... This is probably going to name Burning Wish, right? I have no idea. I think the right play is actually Meddling Mage. Okay. We need to draw like Dark Ritual Lines at Diamond. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that was good enough. I think we're just dead. No, we, we can only hit seven mana next turn. Uh, and we don't have like a main deck Echo to go do things with. Brainstorm? Yeah, Brainstorm has to be it. Ah! Punished. Maybe once we start recruiting the guard, we were supposed to like uh, play turn one claw. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I don't know. And here's a spot where I'm gonna regret saying this: where main deck echo would be valuable. Uh, it's the first time that I've really missed it so far, not playing uh, with it. Thanks, Bryant, for mentioning that. <laughs> Um, we'll see which hate bear this they decide to play. It should be there's there's Thalia, but if they play Lavinia, oh no, we can't. Be, never mind. Uh, so Vale gets through the counter part, but we can't cast Ad Nauseum. Yeah, that um, doesn't do anything. Can't play it, dude. Yeah, I really feel as though we should have taken. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like all, like they would just name Burning Wish with us, and we'd have no outs. 
Like, technically, we're, we can still beat this by drawing Burning Wish into um, Massacre before lands. Yeah. Okay. Now do, now do you feel any differently, Alex? No, no. They have the second meddling mage. All right. I guess we can draw to five lands. That's our out. No, they still have the Thalia in their hand. Yeah, we're just they can violin whatever down. they want. Yeah. All right. Well, I imagine I have no this idea deck if this, plays force, but I don't actually know. I don't actually know either. I think we can just cut all the ponders. Um, I think, like, then boarding out ponders probably at like that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just do this. <sighs> oh. This is such a nightmare matchup. Yep. Can't beat everything, and sometimes you just... Yeah, that, that's one of the um, things about playing TS is that there are some matchups that are just like this. Shocking news. Hate Bear deck beats combo deck. More at 11. Yep. Okay, well, let's go. While we wait, you can always open up the description, follow all the Storm channels, join the Combo Cabal, be a part of a great community, and uh, I think it's well worth it. Help improve the yep. decks that we play. All right, game two, we're on the play. Unfortunately, I think this answer is a little bit too slow. Yep, send it back. This is interesting. Um, I think you're actually supposed to bottom the Abrupt Decay here. Really? I'm looking to turn two combo. I'm looking to, like, maybe empty on turn two. I was thinking about echoing on turn two when we brainstorm on their end of turn. Um, and if they have something like uh, Deafening Silence, then we want the Decay. So I was thinking about bottoming Opal. I'm looking to empty, and I think I want the Opal okay. because of that reason. In fact, I'm also wondering, like, uh, maybe you put, if you want to do that, you put the tag on the bottom to keep this for Deafening Silence. Like, if they have Deafening Silence in their Hate Bear deck, like, that might also have Force, I think I'm okay with, like, we can't beat everything. Mm hmm Part of me also wants to main phase the Brainstorm, because if we hit, like, Lotus Petal... And something else we might be able to um, turn one goblins. They're on four. Yeah, but... So maybe yeah. I was supposed to keep the death or the uh, abrupt decay for deafening sounds. I'm I'm very into uh, this main phase brainstorm. I think we have a lot of good hits. The thing about uh, Deafening Silence is that it's a bridge to all their turn two hate bears, which is kind of dangerous. Yep. All right. The main phase brainstorm. Classic. Okay. And we found Deafening Silence. I'm down with that. Or not Deafening Silence. Weather Bloom Command for Deafening Silence. Um, all right put it like that and i'm just going to pass the turn i want these for our storm count next turn and well, Alex, we, have we actually have pure mana yeah interesting all right i'm just jamming pure so they're like blue white humans i have no idea um if we knew more about their deck we'd be able to make a more informed play here but um, I think we just have to like hope that they don't have some sort of force of will effect. Okay, hey. we stole a game. Uh, I'm not feeling too good about this because this matchup's still very miserable. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, that that felt like a function of us having a very good hand and them all getting to four. Yeah, so I'm trying not to get my hopes up. Uh, it's realistically a nightmare. We did board out Ponder, so we're a little bit lighter on action. Uh, but we do have four answers in our deck plus, you know, these. I still don't know if we're supposed to have Veil of Summer or not. It's just so difficult to actually know. Yeah, Veil of Summer does turn off some of, like, the the effects of Lavinia. Yeah. So, like, if we end up in an extended board state where we hit, like, four or five lands, we can resolve Veil of Summer, play a bunch of zeros, and do that. Yeah, I'm just going to resubmit. that. Yeah. While we wait, you should head over to theepicsroom.com slash shop and check out our mini token pack. For $12, you get 54 tokens. Alex, you have a play set of these, or a set of these, I should say. What do you think about them? They're wonderful. They fit perfectly in a uh, dice compartment in my deck box. Uh, they're great for paper magic. When that comes back, I'm excited to play some Paper Magic with these tokens. Yeah. Me too. You get 54 Goblin tokens on the back, nine of each. And Alex, I don't know if you forgot, but they're mini. They're half the size of a standard Magic the Gathering card. You can once again get those at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right. Game three. We made a quick adjustment. We've decided to swap Veil of Summer for Ponder. Uh, Ponder allows us to have that better turn one explosiveness, and Alex found the uh, deck list that our opponent's playing from the challenge. So there are a few copies of Flusterstorm, but no forces. And uh, we can pull what I like to call Swartz, which is going all in on a Ponder on turn one. Uh, it's on the board. Yep. Yeah, this is um, the list that uh, Kelmaster P top forward with, I believe. Something similar to that. Uh, the internet's a powerful tool. That it is. We're waiting for our opponent to decide whether or not they want to be on the play. Um, they should probably be on the play. That seems like a solid decision. I will not stop them. <laughs> Okay, let's go. All right, not a turn one. Um, I don't hate it, if I'm being honest. Yeah, we have a Rep Decay. Um, we have Ponder. It's like turn one, we get to play like... Uh, Fetch, Bobble, Ponder, Petal, Go. Yeah. They've all gotten pretty heavily last time. We'll see how they do this game. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm just not going to mulligan this hand. Um, I don't know if we can afford to mulligan to a turn one. Yep. Uh, Vern probably finds Trop. Yep. And I think I want to um, Bobble before i ponder just for the information and that yeah they are a four wasteland deck but zero ports and we'll be drawing essentially two cards off the ponder to start right like we'll actually get to draw all three with our draw step yeah opponent's thinking just a little bit yeah They've decided to keep their hand. All right. Flood is strand into. Okay. Ugh. I mean, we have abrupt decay. Oh. Yep. So I guess we're just going to start on ponder then. Technically, I 
I did it because you said it, but I think we were supposed to just play a bobble. Um, and I'm going to ship this. Yeah. That's right. We get to play around Wasteland a little bit more that way. Yeah. Also, I would love to draw Witherbloom Command. Mm-hmm. And we got punished. Yep. No! <sighs> That's my own fault. Uh, that's unfortunate. That wasn't even like that. I was trying to just hit one, and I fat fingered and hit two. Oh, is your F six on two? No, F two is just pass priority until your opponent does something. Oh. Okay, well, their clock is pretty fast. Um, well, the Massacre doesn't matter anymore because his champion's a 3-3. Three, three. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it's only the Deafening Silence is a hate piece still, so we can still kind of get out of this. Well, that's a Thalia. <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to need to Massacre and... Yeah, that's brutal. And it's worth noting, Witherbloom is not an out uh, because uh, the Mother of Ruins. Yep. So I guess next turn we play Lotus Petal, or if we draw some imprintable, we play Chrome Mox. I think we're just realistically dead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to concede. I think that Fat Finger... Uh, it didn't cost us the game. Like, we weren't guaranteed to win this by any means. But uh, we could have killed the Deafening Silence before uh, Thalia. Yeah, we would have been a turn ahead, yeah. Yeah. So, unfortunately, that happened. Let's see the next few. Uh, it's not going to let us. Not a big deal. But we're 2-2. Two two. Oh. Round number 5 will be coming up in just a second. All right. Alex, round number 5. We're going to try to get this one finished with 3-2, uh, get our money back. How do you feel about that? All right, let's do it. Um, opponent's known for playing Burn, but I don't think that this hand is keepable. It's got many things we want except for that first land. Uh, this hand's a little bit slow. It does have the thought sees for Eidolon, but I don't know if it's good enough. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think Bobble is like pretty good. Um, Defense Grid is obviously not a very good card, but we have Ponder to do things with, so we're kind of setting up for turn three, and that's spooky without Lion's Eye Diamond. But I think it's better than most five-card hands. All right, let's try it. I don't know if I agree, but we'll for science, let's do it. Yeah. Um, we do get to bobble our opponent um, to double check what they're on. Roiling Vortex main deck. Um, so why don't we kind of... hold on the thought seas and then cast ponder this turn? Yep. That's not bad. Yeah, and because we have a bubble, we will draw all these cards. Um, and I'll take that, yeah. Fortunately, it's a Chrome Mox on top. Yeah, no land in the set of cards there. So are we supposed to... Uh, no, Ponder can't find anything here. Um, I think we're supposed to discard the... Yeah. Vortex. The Vortex. Uh, well, they don't have a second have... land, so... Take idle on player zeros. I guess we could have bobbled them first. I mean, I don't think we're beating either of those cards. That's fair. All right, Rift Bolt's on top. 
so that would have been better to not play LED because uh, that's free information. Like that could have been a storm count for uh, empty. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't hate Bloodstained Mire. I would have preferred it being revealed, uh, but that's fine. Yep. Like opponent playing creature. Ah, uh, and see, on top. All right. We lost the storm from Diamond. Uh, um. So if we imprint Ponder, uh, that's only six mana. That's not seven for Pier. I still think we're probably supposed to echo. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is that even if we cast Ponder looking for more mana, we'd need to find one of three LEDs, and that's not terribly likely because even Dark Ritual doesn't do it. Because um, you'd lose the mana from the Chrome Mox then. No, that doesn't matter. Let's go Echo. I'm only going to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave both Black Floating in case we draw the Tendrils. Yep. Uh, go, 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 go Brainstorm. Mag Magic Brainstorm. All right. <laughs> um, I just want to think this through. So it's free to put Bobble on top, and then the Ad Nauseum will ponder into the Ad Nauseum. <sighs> um, we can put the Mire back. It doesn't matter. We're casting Ad Nauseum. Yeah. From 11 life. All right, so now we add three black. Okay. Need some mana. All right, two mana. There's the tendrils. All right, Just need a dark a ritual. Dark, dark rit. All right, one more mana. That doesn't do it. All right, so I think here we're supposed to stop and cast Ponder looking for Dark Ritual. Yep. That I think said, that's higher odds than uh, um, drawing two zeros. Yeah, we could brainstorm looking for two zeros. I think the correct play is to cast Ponder. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna feel like a dummy though when we bring or when we ponder into two zeros. <laughs> hey, hey! Thank you, deck. I'm gonna up my storm count. They can't. Stop me. <laughs> they can't stop me. He's a madman. Boom! Seventeen drills. Uh, Ad nauseum from 11 life. Let's go. Do that with an echo in your deck, Alex. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's just board in cards and then decide if we want to change anything. Um, so that actually maps pretty cleanly right there. Mm -hmm. uh, their most recently published list had kind of an interesting sideboard of three shenanigans. I mean, that doesn't change our board plan at all, but it is good yeah. to know. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Witherbloom kills anything relevant, but it's, I think it's just better than any of the other cards. So. It drains life. <laughs> yeah, it might be a relevant mode. And this hand's just like... It's an LED away. Yeah. It's like very average, but like a good average feeling, right. you know? Real question for you. Very, very important question. Who do you give the credit to in game one? Is it Echo or is it Ad Nauseum? I think it's Echo. Echo drew the Adnaz. Um, that, that's what I would say. All right. Opponent starts on a Swift Sphere. I'm going to get Basic yeah. Swamp here. Plays around Press yeah. Progress a little bit. Yep. And even if we got like um, Underground Sea or something, that doesn't really matter that much. Smash Get out of here. Get. No Eidolon for you. Okay, another Swiss Sphere is spooky. We can take the smash. Um, hmm. We're going down to seven. Going to be dead pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I think that there's a real argument for casting Burning Wish to find Echo here, because uh, we have hard cast Echo next turn. 
Yeah, but they can smash the opal at any point. Um, That's fair. So I played the Delta because if they play a Goblin Guide, we get a Scry. The suspended Spend Rift Bolt. So this is. Gonna so we are dead to that next turn. Yes, uh, if we echo, we're dead to a fire blast. Um, yeah, that's a card that they could have, I guess. I'm gonna fetch the thin if they fire blast me. They fire blast me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I think as long as we get any blue land. Okay, that means we can echo. Yeah, and that means that the opal is on, so let's go. I mean, it sucks that we're dead to a light breeze, but it is what it is. Yeah. Hold on. There's a better way of doing this. Yeah. So they have a 40% chance of drawing Fire Blast off of Echo. Probably yeah, a little if bit it's higher. in their deck. Um, I mean, it's definitely in their deck. Are you kidding me? Um, but there's nine cards are or i'm sorry there'll be four cards removed so it's probably 41 42 percent yeah but if we pass the turn we're 100 percent dead so yeah. this is the correct play um so this needs a miracle brainstorm in order to win yeah let's see it Ugh. Let's see if it even would have hit. Nah. Oh. Okay. Super dead. All right. We are on the play for the third and final game of this league, though. Uh, Alex, are there any adjustments that you would make? Uh, I guess with the Bloom Command killing the Royal Aim Vortex is good enough. So, and I think none of the other cards on our sideboard are good. Uh, defense grid to like echo through burn spells is neat, but I think most of the time that's not worth it. Just we a very slow that card, game, right? We mulligan in game two. Uh, no, we didn't. We kept seven. Okay. All right, on the play. So close. So this yeah, is a situation on the draw, where I might the, think the about bobble this. would have been better as a right of lane, but I'm still not crazy about this. Uh, I'm gonna ship. Yeah. It. Oh, come on, Doc. <sighs> So two go on the bottom. Yeah. Two going away is really brutal. I don't know what the right play is here. I don't know. So... Let's talk about it. I think that one claw going away is like uh, clearly correct. Um, I think that the other option is the brainstorm of the Thoughtseize, maybe one of the opals. So I think you if we keep, keep... Thoughtseize to imprint it because you don't really want to yeah. redraw it. Like these are both better redraws. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we, I think if we're planning to imprint, I think we want to keep the. I think we keep both claws. Is that crazy? Because one gets LED and the other could possibly win. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's All right, just here we go. Living wild, but here we are. Yeah. I think we should have considered volcanic, but this is fine. I'm just playing an autopilot, man. I'm tired. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
Oh, why can't they ever have Goblin Guide on turn one? Let's get that info. Get punished immediately for not having the fucking Volk. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. So we actually have an out to this. Um, am I crazy? Like, I just want to get Echo here. Yeah. And I'm going to pass. I think we... All I want to draw right now is Dark Ritual. Honestly, I'd take an LED too, because then you can just push Claw for Chain. Yeah, yeah, Dark Ritual, LED, best curse of the deck right now. We have four cards in hand. Bolt us. It's worth noting uh, the vortex deals us one in our upkeep. Mm-hmm. Ooh, here's an interesting thought. Okay, so let's say we draw a dud. We can activate Wishclaw Talisman. Go get Witherbloom Command. Destroy the Vortex, return a fetch. Activate the other Wishclaw for LED. Yeah. Or we could just find Chain of Vapor. Yeah, I guess so. Take all the fun out of it. Um, Chain of Vapor is just better. We... Yeah. We can also bounce the Chromox to reimprint. Yep. I don't think we want to do any crazy bounce our own wish claw shenanigans. So they should bounce this. Um, so here's a question. Would you rather have red or blue floating post echo? I think when we need to win the game so badly, I think I'd rather have the red. Um, it's super close, though, when we have the line drop available. I'm also worried about uh, giving them a fresh hand when they have all this mana. Yeah, but kind I mean, of feels like if we didn't do something on that turn, we we're gonna lose anyway. So yeah. All right, come on, Echo. Uh, we got Metalcraft. Um. So I think we're supposed to go all in on Brainstorm. Okay. Am I wrong? Uh, no, I think you're right. I think we crack for blue-black, right? Also, just to make it a little bit more fun... Lion's Eye Diamond. Ugh. Roiling Vorchox. No, <laughs> um, um, I, I don't think we can add nauseum. I guess we could add nauseum uh, for one. We could put that's too much mana, right? So we have one, 
four, seven. We have, or so we have seven floating. We have eight mana. Nas puts us down to three. And then we would go to seven, reveal those two. Uh, so then we go to two mana to ponder, sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond. So the ponder would have to find exactly Burning Wish. Because you couldn't. That doesn't even work. We're a mana short. Mana short if you do that. All right. So if you're at five mana once you cast Ponder. All right. Come on, Ponder. Tendies. Give me Tendies. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where they. It turns out that they were slow rolling us the entire time. Come on. Oh. Yes, opponent. Uh, very much indeed. We did have a good ponder shuffle. <laughs> wow. Oh, we worked for that 3-2. Uh, that's the happiest I've ever been with 3-2 in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we faced quite a slog. Uh, we faced Miracles, uh, Ant with a very skilled pilot, Omnitel. Sort of a difficult matchup, especially when they have Veil of Summer. Uh, blue, white, human hate bears with Deafening Silence and Fluster Storm. Like, we're never winning that. And then yeah. Burn with eight main deck permanent uh, hate spells. So that was actually a really wild league. Um, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed myself. I don't know about yeah. you. No, lots of close games coming down to the wire. Ponder Shuffle for the win. Uh, thank you, Mr. Landon Swartz, for the line. Uh, yeah. So, looking at the list, let's bring that back up. Yeah. Whew. What a league. It. Yeah. All right. So, Alex, what are your thoughts on this after that league? So, Chain of Vapor MVP. Don't give yourself too um. much credit, McKinley. Come on. <laughs> um, uh, Chain of Vapor was good. I liked the main deck defense grid, even though I don't think we ever cast it. Uh, we did once, but it, it was irrelevant, I think. Yeah. Um, it felt like our sideboard plans were cohesive, and there weren't more cards than we wanted or fewer cards than we wanted to take out. Uh, Bobble gave us lots of useful information. We made a lot of informed plays with the Bobble. We definitely could have played a, sometimes a little bit better with the Bobble, but I think that's just practice and, um, you know, some mechanical errors after being tired of after work or whatever. So. It is almost 11 here. Uh, I said here, so you can't correct me this time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I like I definitely fetched for the wrong land in that last game as well. Um, but I thought this list was very tight. I'm looking forward to playing this list more just to collect data. So Alex had an interesting thought the other night, which was, does Measure's Bobble speed up or slow down the deck? And I don't have enough of a data size uh, for a strong opinion on that. But it does turn on Opal on turn one a lot more. So now you have Opal and Chromes being active on turn one more, which leads to more turn one Burning Wishes, more turn one Wish Claw Talismans, and more turn one Defense Grids, which is pretty interesting to me. Yeah. And I think for people who are looking to pick up the deck, uh, casting Claws and Burning Wishes on the turn that isn't your combo turn is a really important concept in this deck. It's basically like draw like drawing Dark Ritual when you get to... Uh, cast one of those spells, pass the turn, and then untap. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to invest two mana into whatever you're doing, so it makes all of your lines cheaper. Like I think you saw us cast Burning Wish for Peer or for Echo or just run out Talismans all the time during the league whenever we had those two mana available. Like, why waste that mana? Yeah. Uh, I didn't really miss the fourth carpet in this league. That said, we didn't really face a whole lot of uh, blue decks either. Uh, not that Omnitel isn't a blue deck, but it's not a carpet matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been playing some other other leagues, and with this list, uh, with the three carpet, it's still fine. Uh, there's more Leovolds around, um, so that that's always spooky with carpet. Okay, Alex, uh, any final thoughts on um, this league? And no, I uh, I like this list. list. I'm super excited to continue to play it. Uh, I hope you guys try it out in leagues. I think it's super tight. And I'm excited to tune it more. Yeah. 
Uh, I think we've uh, maybe hit something with a lot of potential here. Maybe Mishra's Bobble was the correct card from uh, from Cold Snap the entire time. Who knows? Yeah. Got to keep that place out of Cold Snap cards in the deck. Exactly. Well, if you liked this video as much as Alex did, make sure you subscribe. Uh, but also, if you're already subscribed, make sure to comment and like down below. Alex, thank you for joining me. I do appreciate it. Uh, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you for watching. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.